In this episode, we talk about the 10 rules you must follow to join a motorcycle club. A lot of people always have questions about prospecting for an outlaw motorcycle club or 1% of club. What are the rules that you have to abide by? Maybe that you can't live with. We get into it on this episode a Demon's Row TV. And oh yeah, we ghosting, baby. Big shout to the ghosts and the ghost sets. Welcome to Demons Row TV, the holy grail of MC culture, where we cover everything motorcycle and motorcycle club involved. I'm Sos the Ghost. I'm your host for the evening. And if you're new to this motorcycle club lifestyle, there are things that are strange about joining clubs. We're going to break down the 10 weirdest rules you must follow to join a motorcycle club now this article we're going to go off is from hotcars.com so we're going to debunk what's fake talk about what's real let's get into it driven by radical ideas and occasional illegal activities there are strict and stringent rules to ensure that no member steps out of line or jeopardizes the safety of other members or the club it ensures that they know what they've signed up for and under all circumstances uphold the concepts that the club promotes it also allows the motorcycle club to only select those members that would prove to be a perfect suit for the club as a whole bikers should know or read these things before joining the motorcycle club however some of these rules are quite extreme and downright weird to be exact regardless they are in vogue in many motorcycle clubs and however weird they still need to be followed number 10 every meeting needs to be attended motorcycle club meetings are the events in which the upcoming itinerary for all the members are discussed or important announcements are made these gatherings usually take place at least once in a week and it's mandatory for all members to attend now depending on what club it is not all meetings are mandatory they want everybody there but sometimes you have meetings that are like emergency that are mandatory sometimes you know something happens someone goes down there's issues going on and you'll have a mandatory meeting but you know if it's a monthly meeting if you're in a club you should be there but if you're working and stuff like that brothers are very good about understanding that some clubs don't care that meeting is once a month or once a week you have to be there that's part of your commitment certain biker clubs also require members to provide a valid reason in case they skip a meeting a valid reason could be responsibilities they need to tackle at work any kind of illness or incarceration missing several meetings in a row without permission from club hierarchy can get a member kicked out and therefore need to be avoided at all costs so this is very true if you miss a couple of meetings in a row brothers will act like they don't love you no more like it's really like that and if and you should call and let them know what's going on sometimes brothers don't do that and they put their self on a hot plate for no apparent reason so just have enough respect to call and let them know what's going on sometimes you just don't want to go you got to come up with a real reason you can't just be like oh i didn't feel like going or just ghost the club like that's a problem that they're gonna have a sergeant come check you if you're not coming to meetings and you just don't give an excuse number nine respect your gear and biker vests every motorcycle club has their own insignia and color that they flaunt on their vests or jackets and these symbols are treated with the utmost respect they embody the club and therefore embody the ideology that the club lives by through these vests and emblems any layman can recognize the allegiance of the wearer and therefore know better than to mess with him or her. Therefore, every member must treat their gear and biker vests with the same respect that these pieces of uniform accrue when a biker wears them. Selling these vests is out of the question and a member cannot replace or lose them either. Members who have left the club must do so by returning the gear and vests to the motorcycle club or they will be taken from the departing member by the use of sheer force. So this is true, you have to take care of your colors. You can't just leave them sitting on the back of your chair. You can't leave them sitting on your bike. 
you can't lose your vest. I've never heard of somebody losing their vest, but I've heard of them losing it by getting it taken from another club by a rival club. But yeah, you gotta just take care of your colors. And if you are leaving the club, give them everything. Rings, uh, jewelry, any kind of jewelry, any kind of support merch, all that type of stuff. Give them everything, give them their stuff back. That is club property. Number eight, prospective member. Get ready for some tough encounters. Motorcycle clubs choose only the toughest prospects to become members of their elite group. And this selection is done through a rigorous vetting process that often encompasses some rough encounters for the prospective member. He would have to undergo a waiting period before being accepted as part of the group. And this waiting process often involves the actual members of the club handing out work to them. Prospects need to wait and observe active club members before being inducted as a full participant. Members need to carry out menial tasks for them to be given sanctuary at the club. Some of these experiences can include tough hazing to weed out the best in the lot. So this is true, a lot of menial tasks, a lot of cleaning up, bar stuff. If you got a big ego, you're not gonna work as a prospect. You know, like if your ego is so big that you don't wanna clean up and stuff like that, it's just not for you and, and it's not for everybody, you know? Motorcycle clubs and the lifestyle is not for everybody and the way it's changing, less and less people are getting involved these days. Number seven, every meeting has particular protocols that need to be followed. Most motorcycle clubs are not all chaotic when it comes to the way they operate, and this can be observed in a manner in which most of these club meetings are held. These clubs promote a certain set of mindset and also uphold particular codes and laws which reflect in their meetings as well. A particular set of protocols need to be adhered to, and these dictate the manner in which these meetings are to be held or leaders are to be chosen. Failure to comply with any of them can lead to fines. The most commonly known set of rules followed by most motorcycle clubs are derived from Robert's Rule of Order, a list of guidelines that facilitates organized and democratic assembly of club members. So I've seen both, you know, clubs will have, some clubs will have very organized, structured, old school way of doing things and the other clubs is just like a free for all what are we talking about whatever the newest thing that's going on people bickering that's that's mostly what people talk about most of the time is, is little personal beasts that brothers have with each other and stuff like that i mean depending on what chapter you're in you know and depending on you know where you live and who you vibing with and stuff like that but you know it could go either way it could be really structured or it could be chaos and there's a lot of chaotic clubs out here number six even human waste is not uncommon for new members. It is not an unknown fact that the induction process of most motorcycle clubs is tough and rigorous. However, some clubs have rules and practices that are downright filthy, to say the least. As explained in Daniel Shields' revelations in 2012's Justice Policy Journal, whereby the graduate from Rutgers School of Criminal Justice opens up on the different outlaw motorcycle clubs that the U.S. has. She shed some light on the initiation process prospective members have to undergo to become a full-time member. One of these is an initiation ritual that includes active members depositing body fluids like vomit, urine, and even crap on a vest and making the new prospect wear that vest and go out for a ride so the vest becomes dry. So I've heard of stuff like this in the old school days. I have not heard of something like that nowadays. I've heard of like the beer, you know, like a whole bunch of people, you know, throwing beer on you, stuff like that, their drinks on you and stuff like that. But to me, that's like gangland. You know, we want to make them look bad like they're animals mentality. You know, is there a club out there that maybe still does stuff like that? I guess I don't see it, but you know, it's possible. Anything is possible. But it's not a like a ritual that all clubs are doing, you know? Number five, women have separate hierarchy. Although uncommon, sometimes even women are members of motorcycle clubs and there are motorcycle clubs that are exclusively for women. They have a separate hierarchy set for themselves as these clubs usually function on strict and organized structures. However, seeing a woman in a motorcycle club is extremely rare as they make up a slim percentage in the world's biker community. So there's, there's a lot of female clubs and they kind of structure themselves the same way that MCs do or their impression of what MCs do. But a lot of times they get kind of like big brothered by a, by a male club, by a traditional MC. So they get the structure and they get taught the, the correct way to do things. Number four, 
no place for rebels without a cause. Motorcycle clubs as portrayed in movies is quite different from what they actually are. These are rigorously structured organizations that have distinct hierarchies requiring immense respect and influence, which the members holding these positions have acquired over the years. While some motorcycle clubs have the nicest members, others are full of bad boys. None have rebels without a cause. Non-conformists and rebels should be aware that a motorcycle club is not a place for them as they are stringent rank and file compositions within these clubs and not everybody can do whatever they desire. So this is a great topic right here because I've heard people say, you're in an outlaw club, you got more rules than a citizen. Like how y'all outlaws? But you gotta really think about it. How many rules do you follow on an everyday basis? Lights, crossing the street, like any little thing that you follow, there's a lot of stuff that outlaws don't follow. So I never understood that theory, but they don't understand the walk of an outlaw, like what it's like to truly live with no rules. And just because you're following your club's rules, they got way less rules than you follow in your everyday life. Number three, your race may prove to be vital. A black biker aspiring to become a member of a motorcycle club might need to rethink his ambitions as most motorcycle clubs that exist in the world, especially the ones in the USA, do not take kindly to people who are not white. So I disagree with this. In the outlaw world, everybody's kind of sectioned off. But overall, like clubs in general, there's not these rules. It really depends on where you're from. On the East Coast, people are a lot more united. In other places, people are a lot more separated, but that's more like an outlaw you know, motorcycle club, but overall motorcycle clubs is not exactly like that. Number two, every area has only one motorcycle club. Just like it was back in the days in the mafia in New York, motorcycle clubs have separate territories designated to themselves that they and only they can control. A particular area can only have one motorcycle club operating within its limits and the existence of another can lead to territorial disputes. So this right here is incorrect. Every area doesn't have one motorcycle club. You go to certain areas and there's 40 clubs, you know, it just really depends on where you're at. Now, if you want to say one outlaw club that runs the show in a territory in a certain area, yeah, not the whole state though. Number one, sport bikes are for suckers. There are many popular motorcycles among motorcycle club members. A sport bike is rarely one of them. Although there are exceptions, most motorcycle club members around the world prefer classic choppers or cruiser bikes to be their ride of choice. Apart from the practicality that such bikes provide while traveling long distances, they also provide the motorcycle club member with a rugged experience. In that sense, they are quite old school when it comes to the two wheelers they choose for motorcycle club related activities. So if you're talking outlaw motorcycle clubs, yeah, they're not pushing sport bikes. Some let you have sport bikes in the beginning until you get fully patched and you have to, you know, you have to have acquired a bike by that time. Others, you have to walk in with a Harley victory depending on the club. But overall, non-outlaw motorcycle clubs is majority sport bikes. So you could ride a sport bike and join a motorcycle club. Don't think that you're disqualified from joining a regular club just because you have a, a sport bike and that's your style. You got hood riders out here, rough riders. You got all kind of clubs that, you know, accept sport bikes. So that's an important aspect to joining a club is, is what club is for you. What is your style? What kind of bike you ride? What kind of bike do they ride? You can't be the sore thumb. If you want to learn more about motorcycle club culture, hit that subscribe button. If you want to support the role, get your Go Savelli mask now. They're on www demonsroad.com i got another video where i talk about the dark story of myrtle bike week it'll be linked above and thank you for tuning in to demons road tv the holy grail of mc culture like subscribe and comment and oh yeah we ghosting baby